welcome back to 3R Ballistics, where we use a little outcast science, come up with some ingenious ideas we think outside of the box, and test them, see what we get. Well, you guys asked for it. We're gonna show you our build and how we created basically a level four modern medieval body armor. So what we wanted to do is give you an explanation before we show you how we built each one of these plates. An explanation as to why we used the materials that we did and why we used them in a certain configuration. Each material served a purpose and we're going to go over that now. So let me start with what we used on both plates that was similar. We decided to use sheet metal on both plates. Since we're using sheet metal, that's kind of why we turned it into a medi medieval themed um, build. It's easy to cut, easy to conform, and you know, it fit the need. I wanted to use something that I could encase the materials inside without having to think too much about it. Building these, we knew we wanted to have a strike face and a backing that would catch the projectile. The strike face had to break it up, slow it down, and the backing was gonna catch it. Now, the reason we did two different methods is we wanted to see if just a hard strike face and a composite backer is all you need. And what we found out is it does matter what you have as a strike face. So for our strike face, we did use these alumina tiles. These alumina are from grainsupply.com. They're actually for abrasion resistance for grains and materials going through silos and such, um, feed, feed shoots and stuff like that. So they're not as pure as ballistic grade alumina, tile, uh, alumina strike face. This is more of a 90% versus a 99% uh, pure alumina. That being said, it's still much stronger, much harder than porcelain tile. Um, this does come in six by six sheets and it can be moved. We painstakingly took each one of these off of the backing and applied them single tile on a, an elastomer which was on the back of this. There you can see a little bit of the elastomer. So through testing, we did notice though, having just these by themselves will stop projectiles, but these tiles, the energy has to go somewhere. So when, when a bullet hits here, it will stop it, but it transfers that energy from the projectile into the tile. And so now this becomes your projectile. Bullet stops and projectile goes through. Uh, maybe I'll roll in some footage here where we actually tried this and I have an example where we tried this on some polyurethane. We put these tiles in polyurethane, shot it with just a 9mm. Stopped the 9mm but then the tile continued to fly through as a projectile. So you're basically transferring the energy into a separate projectile. So to create some strength in mass and still have a little conform conformability to to have a multi-curve plate we decided to wrap the tile in kevlar now this is not any ballistic kevlar this is just a woven kevlar um it's even a i think it's only a five and a half ounce kevlar it's not even a that strong of a kevlar Still has the same properties of Kevlar as far as tear strength, abrasion resistance, but really what we wanted to do is encapsulate the tiles in the Kevlar and hope that when the projectile hits, the Kevlar will keep the tile from turning into a projectile. And the elastomer we used, very simple. Gorilla Glue, uh, heavy duty, ultimate strength, found at most uh, home centers stores you know and here I'll give a quick video example of exactly that application where I spread the elastomer as thin as I could over the Kevlar before applying the tile uh, continuing to scrape any excess uh, any excess elastomer is just excess weight so after I have it completely spread 
uh, what I'll continue to do is just remove as much of the elastomer as possible. And once we've scraped the excess elastomer, we painstakingly add one tile at a time until we complete the whole plate and end up with this right here. As you can see, they're all touching. They're all right next to each other. So the last step will be to wrap the Kevlar around this. I do wanna re-emphasize that this is very important in keeping the tiles together as wrapping. So we put some more elastomer on the back side of the tile. Uh, try to take out any voids that may be there. And finally, we're gonna tighten the Kevlar and wrap it around the tile with as little excess and as tight as possible. So once again, that is why we wrapped the Kevlar around the, the tile, to keep it together and to get it multi-hit capable. Uh, when these things are broken up, each one, they shatter just like any other porcelain. And if you can keep the damage localized, you can obviously potentially stop more projectiles from going through so that was on the basic one that one had tile uh, wrapped Kevlar around it then it had unidirectional ultra high molecular weight polyethylene and then it had again unidirectional Kevlar same type of construction as the polyethylene so that was the first build and uh, it did pretty good. We didn't press the polyethylene. We didn't press the Kevlar. We didn't do anything. We just put 40 layers of this, 10 layers of this, put them together. We did tape them together. Once again, just as we wrapped Kevlar around the tile, we taped the polyethylene together to hope to contain it. And for that, we used this uh, Scotch brand 8884. It's basically a polyethylene tape. So to hold this first plate together, what I used was a nail and a washer. Basically just four of these. So I drilled a hole, put the nail in, a washer, and I welded them together. As simple as that. And I only had four of them, so we were not hoping, let me rephrase that, we were not expecting for it to hold together as well as it did. Um, back face deformation, like I said in the previous video, was excessive. I mean, something you probably wouldn't have walked away from. Okay, and on to the second plate. Um, and excuse the noise, there is grinding, there is... Anyway, second plate. We went ahead, did the same strike face, did the same idea with the tile, wrapped it in Kevlar, but we wanted to give it more strike face. So behind the Kevlar, we added, well, let me get this one. We added S glass, S2, type S2 uh, fiberglass. Uh, a little bit stronger than E glass, but it's more in how it breaks when it fails that we wanted to use. That was what was important in using this. Not what it could stop, but how it fails. And I'll show you at the very end, so stay for that. But we only used 10 layers of this fiberglass. We also pressed it. I'll show it in here. We just used some clamps to get out any excess uh, resin. 
I also feel I should mention that I just used a chip brush, a little two inch chip brush to apply the resin. And as I added the 10 layers of S glass, um, I didn't do much else. I tried to use as little epoxy resin as possible. And uh, when we were done with that, I knew that we were gonna end up pressing it. And to press it, what I did is I put a thin layer of parchment paper, then the sheet metal. And like I said, I just used, um, I believe it was about six or eight clamps and pushed down on pressure until basically resin started flowing out. What we use for resin, we use Total Boat resin, the slow hardener. We usually use it for the E glass when we're doing the big plates. Uh, that test is actually coming up to see how much uh, woven roving it takes to stop a, a rifle round so watch that one next time but yes so this is just total boat uh, it's epoxy resin and it's a slow hardener so if you have multiple layers it's a lot easier to use so we went ahead did that press this it conformed to the shape of the plate behind this we also had a behind that we had one more sheet, and one of the big things you'll notice here, most failure methods of metal is to plug out. None of these plugged out. That is huge. That tells me none of the projectiles even made it this far. It was just the sheer strength and elasticity that broke this. So if I put all these back together, which kind of hard to, but there is no plugging out. There's no projectile that went through. And to prove that was our final layer. We used, reused a level three Kevlar plate. I think we got this off of eBay. So not even the best quality. Uh, we did put 10 layers of polyethylene in the front, not pressed. And as you can see, there is, there is almost nothing here. And, and to prove my point again with the strike face, let me get the other, the other polyethylene from the other plate. You'll notice there is a lot of lead that came through. There is no lead that came through. That's a, that's a big thing right there. That's a big thing. So this, first plate still did its job at stopping it but there is a lot of damage to these initial initial um, layers of polyethylene this one did virtually nothing by the time you get to the last polyethylene this is 10 there is not even a tear on the polyethylene and like I said this was used Kevlar this this already has some holes in it uh, or a hole. It looks like we just had one hole here. But still, impressive. Impressive that the strike face would make that much of a difference. And one of the last things I do want to point out about the second build is that the attachment that I did for this one was welding. I actually welded all this sheet metal together. And um, all, of, all of it except for the top. The top I did not weld, but that being said, it uh, held, held together quite a bit better. Those were the two builds. I hope you enjoyed, and until the next one.